Hello students, welcome to the class. So in the previous class, we have discussed regarding Lee Chatelier's principle. We have seen what is the effect of concentration, effect of pressure, effect of addition, temperature and effect of addition of the catalyst. So if you look there, I have made a chart to make you all understand it. So effect of change of concentration, if the concentration of A or B, if suppose A and B are the reactants is increased, then equilibrium will shift to the right and equilibrium constant, there is no change. If the concentration of product C or D is increased, then the equilibrium will shift to the left in order to nullify the effect. Pressure, if delta N is zero, there is no change in the pressure um, equilibrium composition, even if the pressure is increased or decreased. If delta N is negative, that means what? The number of moles of products are less than number of moles of reactants, right? then delta n will be negative when you increase the pressure equilibrium will shift towards the right if delta n is positive means what number of moles of products are more than number of moles of the reactants then if on increasing the pressure the equilibrium will shift in towards left side that is in a backward direction temperature we have exothermic and endothermic reactions for exothermic reaction wherein delta h is negative equilibrium will shift towards left for endothermic reactions wherein delta H is positive, equilibrium will shift towards right. Then its equilibrium will be achieved very fast. And here, due to effect of temperature, even the equilibrium constant value also changes. Yes, value is, if for exothermic reaction, the Kc value is decreased. For endothermic reaction, Kc value is increased. Effect of addition of catalyst, we have seen there is no change for the effect when uh, in the position or in the equilibrium constant of a reaction when you add a catalyst because on addition of the catalyst, both uh, what you say, uh, forward reaction and backward reaction will occur at the same speed. Therefore, equilibrium can be achieved early, we can say. It can be achieved early, that's it, yes. Next concept that is ionic equilibrium in solutions. Okay, so what we come across here, reactants and products, they coexist in equilibrium so that reactant conversion to product is always less than 100% in equilibrium, in a reversible reaction. Equilibrium reactions may involve the decomposition of what? Decomposition of covalent reactant or you can say ionization of ionic compounds into their ions in the polar solvents. Here we will be learning about in ionic equilibrium, we'll be learning about ionic solutions which are in ionic equilibrium. The substances in ionic equilibrium, they are classified into two categories. We call them electronic substances, yes, based on their ability to conduct the electricity and they are non-electrolytes and electrolytes. So what are non-electrolytes? These are the substances that consists of molecules that bear no electric charge. So they do not have any charge, or you can say they do not dissociate into their constituent ions. Whenever we speak about students, whenever we speak about ionic solutions, like how in electricity, electrons are the charge carriers. Similarly, in ionic solutions, ions are the charge carriers. If a substance is not dissociating into ions, then it will not conduct the electricity. Understanding, therefore it becomes non-electrolyte. So what do you mean by non-electrolyte? Substance which do not dissociate into ions. Yes, and therefore it does not conduct any electricity either in molten state or in aqueous state because in solid state at least it cannot conduct electricity. For example, sugar solution is an example for non-electrolyte sugar solution. So they are, it is what? It is non-electrolyte. Then electrolyte means what? The substances that dissociate into constituent ions in their aqueous solution or even in molten state and thus we say they conduct electricity in their aqueous solutions or molten state. Example, your salt solution, acid solution, base solution, all are what? They are electrolytes, yes, because they conduct electricity. So, basically what I can say is electrical conductors Substances which allow electric current to pass through them. Yes, so I take it here. So we have here. Electric 
conductors. Okay, so substances which allow the electric current to pass through them are called conductors or electric conductors. Okay, these electric conductors, they are classified into two types. So they are being classified into two types. So what are the two types? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what are those two types? So there are certain conductors which conduct electricity without undergoing any chemical change. Without undergoing any chemical change. Any chemical change. Okay, such conductors are known as metallic conductors or they are also called as electronic conductors. They are called what? You can call them either metallic or electronic. So they conduct electricity without undergoing any chemical change. And there are some conductors which undergo, which undergo decomposition or you can say ionization. That is a chemical change, right? Undergo decomposition when an electricity is passed through them. So they undergo a chemical change and such conductors, such conductors are called as electrolytic conductors. What they are called as? Electrolytic conductors. Yes. Or you can just call them as electrolytes. Electrolytes. So electrolytes... <laughs> They conduct electricity. How? By undergoing decomposition. So they under electric conductors. Yeah, conductors we have, we have uh, non-electrolytes. Okay. So under electric conductors, some of them conduct electricity without undergoing any chemical change, like our, our metallic conductors, which we study under metals. Okay. They are called electronic conductors also. Electronic conductors. And there are some which undergo chemical decomposition, which undergo chemical change. They are called what? They are called electrolytic conductors or simply they are called what? They are simply called as electrolytes. Simply they are called as electrolytes. These electrolytes they are further divided into two types. The electrolytes are further divided into two types. Yes, what are the two types are? One is strong electrolytes. Strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. Weak electrolytes. So we have two types of electrolytes, strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. So what are strong electrolytes? The substances which are, which almost completely ionize into ions in their aqueous solution are called strong electrolytes. Yes. So how do you classify or how do you distinguish between strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes? Both have conducting power, right? Yes, but based on some factor, we classify these strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. So on what factor we classify strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes? Okay, fine. So the first point says that the definition, substances which completely ionize, completely ionize in aqueous solutions aqueous solutions they are called strong electrolytes and substances which partially ionize partially ionize in aqueous solutions they are called weak electrolytes like for example i can give you example if i take one mole of hcl say avogadro number all one mole of hcl molecules will ionize to give me h plus Okay, let me write it here like this. All will ionize to give me one mole of H plus ions and one mole of Cl minus ions. So all have ionized completely. You can use the word ionize, you can use the word dissociate. Okay, so which ionize or dissociate completely in aqueous solutions, they are called strong electrolytes. Yes, they are called strong. Here, if I take example, one mole of acetic acid. Yes, 
I may not have all the one mole of acetic acids getting converted to CH3CO minus plus H plus. Some 70% have got converted and some 30% are remaining as it is CH3COOH. This we call it as partial ionization or partial dissociation in aqueous solutions. So in case of strong electrolytes, maximum number of H plus ions we have. Whereas in case of weak electrolytes, we have less number of H plus ions. So here I can say they dissociate completely. Therefore, degree of dissociation, degree of dissociation of strong electrolytes is 1. Degree of dissociation is indicated by the symbol alpha. Alpha is 1. And for strong weak electrolytes, you cannot say it is 1. It is far less than 1, we say. It is far less than 1. Yes. Examples, all strong acids, all strong bases and some salts are the examples. For example, here I can give you HCl, H2SO4, HNO3. These are strong acids. HNO3, then NaOH, then I have KOH, these are strong bases, then I have AgCl, then I have AgNO3, then NaCl, these are what? These are salts. And examples for weak electrolytes are weak acids, weak bases, and some salts. For example, you have H2O, you have CH3COOH, you have NH4OH, weak base, ammonium hydroxide, you have HCN. Yes, these are all examples of weak as uh, electrolytes, HCOOH, formic acid. So strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. So degree of dissociation is one for strong electrolytes and for weak electrolytes it is almost less than so strong electrolytes are the substances that upon a dissociation in their ionic solution ionize completely while in case of weak electrolytes the dissociation is partial in nature. So NaCl undergoes complete ionization in its aqueous solution to render sodium ions Na plus and chloride ions Cl minus whereas acetic acid undergoes partial ionization to render some amount of acetate ions that is CH3CO minus ions are called what? Acetate ions and hydrogen ions that is H plus. In case of strong electrolytes, the dissociation reaction is said to be complete, thus moving in forward direction only. While in case of weak electrolytes, the reaction is said to be what? It is said to be reversible in nature. So in case of weak electrolyte, the equilibrium is established between what? Between ions and between the unionized molecules which can be termed as what? Which can be termed as ionic equilibrium. So this is about ionic equilibrium. So here we have theories of acids and bases. Generally, we know that acids are what? They are substances which turn blue litmus paper to red. Yes, they liberate hydrogen on reacting with some metals. So this is what we know that is acids are. Bases are what? They turn red litmus to blue. And they are bitter in taste, they are soapy to touch, acids are sour to taste. Common examples including NaOH, Na2CO3, etc. This is the common general characteristics of acids and bases. But if you want to define acids and bases, there are certain theories based on which the definition of acids and bases goes entirely different. Yes, first comes Arrhenius concept of acids and bases. So according to this person Arrhenius, he defined acids and bases as follows. So what he said? According to Arrhenius theory, acids are substances that dissociate in water to give hydrogen ions. See here, this statement is very important. That dissociate in water. That means only if water is there, then only they dissociate. So that dissociate in water. So dissociate in water to give hydrogen ions. Bases are substances that produce OH minus ions after dissociation in water. So what was the constraint what Arrhenius used? He used the constraint that only if you consider in water, if you put a substance in a solution, make a solution of it in water, aqueous solution, then if it is giving H plus ions, then only it is acid. Otherwise, it is base. Yes. So according to Arrhenius concept, 
all substances which give H plus ions. Yes, I will mention here, we are talking about which theory? Among that, the first theory we are talking, that is Arrhenius theory. Arrhenius theory of acids and bases. Okay, so according to Arrhenius theory, what is an acid? An acid is a substance which gives, acid is a substance which gives H plus ions, very important, in water, in water. And base is a substance which gives OH minus ions in water. Yes, so OH minus ions in water. So according to him, HCl dissociates in water to give H plus and Cl minus ions. So I can say aqueous. I have to mention it very clearly, aqueous, aqueous, that means solution in water. NaOH dissociates in water, it will give Na plus, this is not our concern, aqueous, plus OH minus aqueous in water. So that is said to be a base. <coughs> so which, sorry, which dissociates into H plus and OH minus ions in water, they are said to be acids and bases. So this was Arrhenius theory. Yes. So some acids and bases ionize almost completely in the solutions. So according to Arrhenius, those acids which ionize completely, ionize completely in the solution of water or in aqueous solution, he called them strong acids and strong bases. Okay, others some which dissociate to limited ex extent or I can say which are partially dissociated, ionized. He called them as weak acids and weak bases. Yes, so examples of uh, strong acids, he used HCl, HNO3, then H2SO4, then HCl4, O4, strong acids. Then examples for strong bases, NaOH. Then we have KOH. Then we have Na, NH4OH. This is strong base. Then even hydrogen compounds cannot be regarded as an acid if it is not dissociating in water as H+. Okay. So what is the utility of this Arrhenius theory? What is the utility? That is what is the advantage you can say. Okay. So Arrhenius theory, uh, the concept of Arrhenius acid basis, it was able to explain number of phenomena like neutralization was explained. Yes, it could explain about neutralization. That is how water gets eliminated. It was able to explain the strength of acids and bases by comparing them as strong acids and strong bases, weak acids and weak bases. But there was limitations. There were limitations. Therefore, this theory for complete explanation of acids and bases is not taken. So what are the limitations is for an, a substance to behave as an acid or a base, water was constrained. So presence of water is absolutely necessary. That means if you take dry HCl, it is not acid according to Arrhenius theory. It should be mixed with water, then only it becomes an acid. So dry HCl, according to Arrhenius theory, is not an acid. That was the first limitation. Yes. Then the concept does not explain acidic and basic characters in a non-aqueous solvent. Forget about taking water or not taking water. If you take any other non-aqueous solvents also, the theory was not successful in explaining. The theory could not be explained. Neutralization reaction is limited to certain reactions only which occur in aqueous solutions only. Yes, although formation of salt is not always in aqueous medium, it can occur in absence of the solvent also. Yes or no? Then it could not explain the acidic character of certain salts. Like for example, AlCl3 is acidic in nature. If you take AlCl3 in water, what happens? Why it will not uh, become an acid? So it could not explain the acidic nature of certain salts. So these were the limitations. Yes. So here we have Arrhenius theory. According to Arrhenius theory, an acid gives H plus ion in water. 
plus but h plus ion does not exist independently because of its very small size and intense dielectric field yes or no and it does not account for basicity of some substances like ammonia which do not possess any hydroxyl group if you see ammonia nh3 it is not having any oh group but base it is basic in nature arrhenius theory says what the substances which give oh minus ions are only basic that too in water are only basic but ammonia is also basic but arrhenius theory does not put for the basicity because ammonia is not giving oh minus ions so it does not possess any hydroxyl ions so it could not account for the basicity of that ion so ionization of an acid can be represented as hx aqueous gives h plus plus x minus or hx in water gives h3o plus plus x minus because h h plus does not exist independently dissociation of a base molecule in aqueous solution m oh gives m plus plus oh minus so this was according to arrhenius theory coming to the next one that is bronsted lorry theory of acids and bases so according to bronsted and lorry these are the two people they tried to define acids and bases in a different way they said an acid is a substance which is capable of donating h plus ion so that is also same so bronsted acid is same as arrhenius acid right because uh, what it says arrhenius acid says that gives h plus ion in water and brought bronsted acid says it gives h plus ion not necessarily in water and bases are substances capable of accepting h plus ions so according to bronsted and lorry acids are what acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors so bases are proton acceptors according to arrhenius theory so let us see let us try to explain here according to arrhenius uh, sorry a bronsted lorry theory bronsted lorry theory according to bronsted lorry theory an acid is a substance which is capable of donating which is capable of donating a proton h plus ion and base is a substance which is capable of accepting a proton yes therefore according to his theory acids are proton donors proton donors and bases are proton acceptors proton acceptors yes acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors yes therefore you can write it like this for example for an acid if i take hcl hcl plus h2o gives me h3o plus plus cl minus so you can see hcl is donating proton yes it is donating its proton and becoming cl minus therefore i can call hcl as an acid according to bronsted and lorry now what is h2o doing h2o is accepting that acid h plus ion yes or no and becoming h3o plus so can i call h2o here as a base because it is accepting h plus ion it is accepting h plus ion yes take one more example nh3 plus h2o gives nh4 plus plus nh4 plus plus oh minus so if you look in this case nh3 acts is acting as a base according to bronsted lorry theory why nh3 is accepting a proton it is what proton acceptor here it is accepting a proton therefore it is a base and from whom it is accepting it is accepting from water so water is giving h plus ion therefore it becomes acid it becomes acid understanding my point similarly you can take many examples we have so many examples ch3 cooh in water if you see what happens h2o it gives ch3 coo minus plus h3o plus so who is accepting uh, who is giving h plus ion ch3 coh is giving h plus ion therefore it is an acid who is taking 
water is taking H plus ion, so it is a base. Yes. Take another example, like uh, uh, we say CO3 minus 2. CO3 minus 2 plus H2O, it forms HCO3 minus plus OH minus. So who is accepting? CO3 minus is taking, accepting. So this is what? This is base. And this is acid because it is giving proton. Yes. So if you see here, CH3COH, H2O, HCl, these are all acids because they are proton donors. Whereas NH3, water here, they are bases because they are proton acceptors. Yes. So if you look at the reaction, if you look at this reaction, first one what I have taken, the first reaction, if you see there, yes, in the reverse process, if you observe reverse of it, yes, you are seeing it in this format now. Now what you see, you see in this format. So this is my reaction, you see. So I will write it here, reverse of this reaction, H3O plus plus Cl minus gives what? It gives HCl plus H2O. So this is the reverse of this reaction, right? So if you see here, now H3O plus is doing what? It is losing its proton. It is giving its proton. Yes. Therefore, can I call this as acid? So it is giving its proton. To whom it is giving? It is giving proton to Cl. Cl is accepting proton. Therefore, this is what? Base. This is base. So H3O plus is giving, donating its proton and forming H2O. Whereas Cl minus is accepting the proton and forming HCl. Getting more point? Thus, the two acid base pairs are present here. Yes. So there are two acid base pairs. Yes. Can I write it here? So this becomes what? This becomes acid. This becomes what? This becomes base. Correct. Understanding. You can see here. Yes. So here, these base pairs are called conjugate acid base pairs. What they are called? They are called conjugate acid base pairs. So if you want to write, suppose you have acid conjugate acid yes it is in equilibrium with conjugate base plus h plus this is how you have to find which is the conjugate acid which is the conjugate base yes so i'll write it here okay let me write it like this uh, let us write a reaction only and take it Yes, so the reaction is HCl plus H2O gives H3O plus plus Cl minus. So this is what this is acid and this is base. This is what look at the opposite way reaction reverse. This becomes acid because it donates proton and this becomes base. Correct. So here what I can say is HCl is losing its acid, is losing H plus ion and becoming conjugate base. And here base is gaining one proton and becoming conjugate acid. This is called what? This is called conjugate acid base pair. Acid base pair. Okay. So if you want, how do we write it? Conjugate acid is irreversible with conjugate base plus H plus. So plus H plus you add, you'll get conjugate acid. From acid, you remove H plus, it will get conjugate base. Yes. Example, suppose you have acid. Let us take it like this. Okay. Suppose you have acid, how do you write conjugate base? <coughs> Sorry. And suppose you have base, how do you write conjugate acid? Okay. Example of acid, I'll take it as HCl. HCl, then I have H2SO4, then I have HSO4 minus, then I have uh, HNO3. Let me say these many examples I have. What is the conjugate base? How do you write conjugate base? 
Yes, if you want to write conjugate base, remove H plus. We'll get conjugate base. Yes, so which is the conjugate base for HCl? Remove H plus, Cl minus. For H2SO4, remove one H plus, HSO4 minus. For HSO4 minus, remove H plus, SO4 minus 2. So minus 1 becomes minus 2 when you remove one more hydrogen. HNO3, it becomes NO3 minus. Yes, similarly, if you have, uh, say, H2CO3, conjugate base, HCO3 minus. Suppose you have HCO3 minus, you will write H, sorry, CO3 minus 2. So this is conjugate acid base. Now, if you have a base and you want to write conjugate acid, add H plus. Add H plus. For example, you have NH3. What is the conjugate acid? NH4 plus. You have H2O. Conjugate acid, H2O plus. Yes. So if water is base, its acid is H3O plus. If water is acid, its conjugate base is OH minus. Getting? Please do remember this. Okay. And this. Yes. So Cl minus is there. What is its conjugate acid? HCl. Add. SO4 minus 2 is there. What is the conjugate base? 1 H plus you add. HSO4 minus. Minus 2 becomes minus 1. HSO4 minus 1 is there. Conjugate acid. H2SO4. Understood. So these are called what? They are called conjugate acid base pairs. Remember, conjugate base of strong acid is weak base. Weak base. <clears throat> yes, and vice versa. Conjugate base of weak acid is strong base is strong base. For example, HCl is there. It is a strong acid. Its a conjugate base will be weak, weak. So this is conjugate base. Yes, H plus is weak base. Suppose you have strong acid. Str you say it's a conjugate base of weak acid. Say CH3 COOH. Its conjugate base is what? CH3 CO minus plus H plus. So this is conjugate base. Correct? So it is what? It is a strong base. Is that understood? Okay. So on the basis of these interactions, we have four types of solvents. We have in Bronsted lorry, four types of solvents. Solvents in Bronsted lorry. The first one is protophilic. First one is protophilic. Protophilic solvents. Then we have protogenic, protogenic solvents. Then we have amphiprotic, amphiprotic, amphiprotic solvents. So these are the four types of solvents. Okay, according to Bronsted and Laurie's theory, these four solvents came into existence. So on the basis of what? On the basis of proton interaction. Yes, see so on the basis of proton interaction, we have four types of solids. Protophilic solvents, solvents. Protogenic solvents, amphiprotic solvents, aprotic solvents. So what do we mean by protophilic solvents? The solvents which have greater tendency to accept protons. So the solvents which have great tendency, greater tendency to accept protons, to accept protons, that is H plus ions. They are protophilic. See, the name suggests protophily means what? Uh, proton loving. Philly stands for proton loving. Protogenic means what? And examples for protophilic for first type are your HCl, your Greater tendency for protons. Yes, it is not HCl. HCl gives protons. So, which has greater tendency to accept protons are protophilic. For example, water is the best example. Then we have NH3, that is ammonia. Then we have ethyl alcohol, C2H5OH. 
Yes. So these are all what? These are all protophilic. They have greater tendency to accept protons. Protogenic solvents means what? The solvents which have the tendency to produce protons. Tendency to produce protons. Produce H plus ions. Yes. Example, again, water is the example. Water can take a proton and form H3O plus. Water can give a proton. It can generate, it can produce a proton and form H plus and OH minus. Yes. So it has greater tendency to produce protons. Even NH3 is your example. NH3 can give H plus ion, H plus ions. Yes. NH3 can take H plus ions. So it is not NH3. I can call NH4 plus as protogenic. Yes, NH4 plus as protogenic. Liquid hydrogen is also protogenic. It can produce protons. Yes, liquid hydrogen or you can take liquid hydrogen chloride. Yes, these are all what? These are protogenic solvents. The third one is amphiprotic solvents. The solvents which both act as protogenic and protophilic. Protogenic and protophilic. Yes, they are what? They are amphiprotic solvents. Example is your water. Water is the example. Even ammonia is the example. It accepts the proton as well as has the tendency to produce protons also. Yes. So it is what? It is amphiprotic protons solvent. Then a protic solvents we have. Solvents which neither donate nor accept protons. Neither donate nor accept protons. Nor accept protons. Protons are called what? They are called uh, aprotic solvents. For example, your benzene. C6H6 is the example. C6H6 is aprotic solvents. So we have types of solvents. Protophilic, protogenic amphiprotic and aprotic solvents. So with the understanding of processed Lorry's theory, what are the merits of this theory? What are the merits of this theory? Yes, see, if you look at processed Lorry theory, it is not limited to the molecules, but also includes ionic species. For example, if I have Cl minus, it will accept a proton and form HCl. So I can speak about ions also. If I have NH4 plus, it can donate a proton and form NH3. So here Cl minus is accepting a proton, therefore it is a base. NH4 plus is donating a proton, it is an acid. So not only for molecules, but also for ions, it can speak. That is the first merit of bronsted lorry theory. The second one says it can explain a basic character of substances like Na2, CO3, NH3 and all. Yes. So according to bronsted lorry theory, uh, uh, what are bases? Bases are substances which... Uh, gain, which gain H plus ions, which take H plus ions at basis. So here it could have also explained the properties, basic characters of sodium carbonate, ammonia, etc. It can explain the acid-base reactions in a non-aqueous medium also. Even if the medium is non-aqueous, it can explain the acid-base behavior or even in the absence of solvent also. HCl, you need not put any solvent, it will give H plus ions. NH3, you need not put any solvent, it will take H plus ions. Therefore, <clears throat> between HCl and NH3, it could explain this concept. These are the merits of a bronsted lorry theory. Then what are the limitations again? This theory also faced certain limitations, certain criticisms. Yes, so what are the limitations of this uh, bronsted lorry theory? The protonic definition cannot be used in explaining the reactions occurring in non-protonic solvents. So some reactions occurring in non-protonic solvents non-protonic solvents like uh, COCl2. How do you explain what is acid here? SO2, sulfur dioxide. Then we have N2O4, oxide of nitrogen. Where you will explain the acid-base behavior here? Yes. Similarly, it could not explain the <clears throat> reactions between acidic oxides like uh, carbon dioxide, then sulfur dioxide, then sulfur trioxide, so there were acid-base reactions taking place here in acidic oxides. So these are what? These are acidic oxides. Yes, and even he could not, it could not explain the behavior in basic oxides also. 
like calcium oxide we have barium oxide we have magnesium oxide which took place in the absence of the solvent for example calcium oxide combines with sulfur trioxide and forms calcium sulfate see this reaction was not being explained neither there is proton transfer no see neither any of the substance is giving a h plus ion nor any of the substance is taking h plus ion so there is no proton transfer in this equation right so it could not explain such cases there are certain substances like bf3 bf3 then we have alcl3 yes they do not have any hydrogen hence cannot give a proton but they are known to behave as acids they were known to behave as acids so these were the drawbacks of what you can say these were the drawbacks or limitations of bronsted lorry theory bronsted lorry theory yes is that right so with these explanation let us look into our slide so you can see her nh3 is a base it is adding taking up a proton and forming an h4 plus which is conjugate acid h2o is an acid which is giving proton and forming conjugate base so acids and bases as conjugate pairs the acids base pairs that differ only by one proton is called conjugate acid base pair for example ionization of hcl in water if you see yes hcl dissociates in water to give h3o plus and cl minus correct so if you see there hcl is giving proton it is losing proton and forming cl minus so it is proton donor acid h2o it is accepting that proton and forming h3o plus therefore it is base therefore you can say water is acting as a base here because it is accepting the proton so cl minus is what it is the conjugate base of hcl and hcl is the conjugate acid of cl minus similarly h2o is what it is the conjugate base of h3o plus or h3o plus is the conjugate acid of h2o is that understood yes okay so this is about bronsted lorry theory even you can take uh, so many examples for uh, conjugate uh, acid base pairs and speak about the acidic strength also students i'll just show you few and explain you the increasing and decreasing acidic strength here yes that would be uh, better here we'll take okay fine so here i will make a distinction okay fine here i will write acid and here we'll write its conjugate base so i hope you know how to write conjugate base for an acid remove h plus ion if you have a base if you want to write conjugate acid add h plus ion okay so here h cl o4 this is called perchloric acid its conjugate base is remove one proton cl o4 minus then we have h2 so4 its conjugate base is hso4 minus then hcl cl minus then you have hno3 <coughs> i'm sorry no3 minus then you have hso4 minus so4 minus 2 then you have h3po4 h3po4 is called phosphoric acid you will get h2po4 minus then you have h2co3 or you take ch3coh plus ch3coo minus then you have h2co3 here i get hco3 minus here you have h2s i'll get hs minus hydrogen sulfide here i'll get hydrogen sulfide ion yes so these are all what these are acids and they are conjugate base so when you go if you want to look at the increasing acidic strength increasing order of acidic strength it is like this for acids it is in this way okay 
Okay. So it is in this way. I'm sorry. Here. Yes. So this is what this is increasing order of acidic strength. Yes. And for bases, we can show it like this. It is in this direction, increasing order of basic strength. Increasing order of basic strength. Yes. So this is about conjugate acid base pair. Conjugate acid base pair. Is that understood? Okay. So next comes Lewis concept. See, this concept, it was being proposed by G. N. Lewis in the year 1939. According to this concept, according to Lewis concept, an acid is a substance which accepts electron pair and a base is a substance which donates electron pair. So what do we mean by an acid and a base according to Lewis theory of acids and bases? So according to Lewis theory, Lewis theory of acids, and bases. According to Lewis theory of acids and bases, an acid is a substance which accepts electron pair. Students accept electron pair, not single electron. They accept a pair of electrons. And Lewis base is a substance which donates electron pair. Electron pair. So acid is a substance which accepts electron pair and base is a substance which donates electron pair. So according to his theory, acids are called electron pair acceptors. And bases are called electron pair donors. Electron pair donors. Simple example I can give you. You can see here. Acid base reaction is proton with hydroxyl ion, H plus plus OH minus. Okay, what I'll get? I'll get H2O. So here, Lewis concept is more, see the acid is also known as electron pair acceptor or you can give one more name here. One more name, what you can give is accepts electron pair. It is electrophile. Yes, it accepts electron pair because it is electron deficient, electron poor. Yes, and pro base, it donates electron pair. It is a nucleophile, nucleophile or it is electron rich. It is electron rich. Yes, so acids are substances which accept electron pairs. Bases are substances which donate electron pair. So you can see here electron deficient species like AlCl3, BH3, H plus act as Lewis acids while species like H2O, NH3 can donate a pair of electrons and act as Lewis bases. They act as Lewis bases. Yes. So let us consider the examples one by one. Lewis concept is a more general than Bronsted glory concept. See, according to Bronsted, we can say here all Bronsted bases. Yes, what we can say is all Bronsted bases are also Lewis bases. Lewis bases. But vice versa is not true. Okay. Yes, but all Bronsted acids are not Lewis acids, are not Lewis acids, okay? All Bronsted bases are Lewis bases, but all Bronsted acids are not Lewis acids. So based on this concept of uh, Lewis, he has given types of Lewis acids. So there are types of Lewis acids. Lewis acids. So according to Lewis theory, what is an acid? 
it is electron pair acceptor correct electron pair acceptor okay fine let us see the types first one molecules in which the central atom they have incomplete octet incomplete octet they are what they are electron deficient molecules yes so for example you take bf3 you take bcl3 then you take alcl3 then you take becl2 yes so in boron trifluoride there are only six electrons here there are six electrons aluminum also there are six electrons on the central atom boron there are only two electrons therefore they do not have complete octet so these all act as lewis acids because they will accept electron pairs second point is all cations yes cations which are formed by loss of electrons yes all cations are expected to act as lewis acids since they are electron deficient and they will not accept one electron students they will accept electron pairs through what through coordinate bond through which bond through coordinate bond yes because uh, there is if you say co covalent bond it is mutual uh, sharing single electron sharing occurs one by one but here it should be a pair of electrons yes third case is molecules in which central atom central atom has empty d orbitals they will also accept electron pairs like for example silicon fluoride it has got empty d orbitals then the stannous chloride sncl4 phosphorus pentafluoride pcl5 these are all what electron pair acceptors and fourth type of molecules are having multiple bonds between atoms of dissimilar electric electronegativity molecules having multiple bonds multiple bonds means what double or triple multiple bonds between atoms of dissimilar electronegativities dissimilar electronegativities like for example carbon dioxide is your example sulfur dioxide is your example based on the same concept there are again he classified bases types of bases what are bases electron pair donors are called bases yes so according to lewis theory first point neutral species yes neutral species having at least one lone pair of electrons having at least one there might be many also one lone pair of electrons they are called bases like for example you have nh3 has one lone pair so it is neutral then you have nh2 amino group one lone pair is there then you have roh oxygen has two lone pairs then you have h2o oxygen has two lone pairs yes so these are all what these are all bases according to lewis theory second negatively charged that is anions anions for example cn minus then you have cl minus then you have oh minus these are all what these are all types of lewis bases even he classified them hard and soft principle of acids and bases yes on that basis what he said is lewis acids and bases they are classified as hard and soft acids and bases hardness means what it is defined as a property of retaining valence electrons very strongly thus a hard acid is that in which electron accepting atom is small yes so according to lewis theory what is hard acid a hard acid is one hard acid what can i call it as a hard acid yes it is one in which electron accepting atom electron accepting atom is small is small so it is having strong tendency to accept electron 
has high positive charge positive charge correct and carries a low polarized or distorted molecule like for example you have pb plus 2 cadmium cd plus 2 you have platinum plus 2 mercury hg plus 2 yes and soft acid so lewis base which holds electrons strongly is a hard base which holds electrons strongly is what it is a hard base like for example f minus it holds electrons very strongly oh minus yes for hard acids i can write here lithium plus ion na plus ion then i have be plus 2 mg plus 2 al plus 3 these are hard acids these are soft acids soft acids okay yes then hard bases means what which hold electrons strongly ch nh3 is hard base soft base means where electrons are easily removed for example i minus electrons can be removed very easily yes so to explain this concept i can take ammonia and bf3 so if you consider ammonia you know that ammonia is a base Lewis base because it is having lone pair. BF3 is Lewis acid because it is electron deficient. So it is not having optic. So what ammonia does is it will share a contribute its electron pair to boron such that after sharing the electron pairs are being the this electron pair it is being after contributing the electron pair it is shared by both nitrogen as well as boron. So here I have BF3. Here I have NH3, correct? Such a type of bond which is occurred how? Which is occurred by one atom is contributing the electron pair. Another atom is sharing the electron pair. What type of bond we call it as? We call it as coordinate bond. Yes. So always Lewis acids and bases are linked through what? Through coordinate bonds. So this is what? This is Lewis base electron pair donor this is lewis acid electron pair acceptor electron pair acceptor yes or no electron pair acceptor is that understood okay so what are the merits of lewis theory lewis acid base theory the merits of lewis acid base theory is that lewis concept is most general of all the concepts and it can explain acidic and basic nature of all those substances which could not be explained by, uh, say, Arrhenius theory or by bronsted lorry theory, yes, even it could uh, even even it could explain acid base reactions which could not explain by other. It that means it could explain neutralization reactions also. So it is a general theory. It could explain neutralization reactions. Then what is the limitation then? Is it having any limitations? Yes, of course it has. It has some limitations. It could not explain the behavior of protonic acids like HCl, where there is transfer of electron pair or say H2SO4. Simple. This was not being explained by Lewis acid, which do not form any coordinate bonds. They do not form any coordinate bonds. Yes. Do not form any coordinate bonds. That was not being explained by Lewis acid base theory. Even it could not explain the relative strength relative strength of acids and bases of acids and bases so relative strength of acids and bases was not explained by lewis theory yes many lewis acids do not possess see because of which a merit was may all the lewis acids could possess catalytic behavior but there are some lewis acids which do not possess catalytic behavior yes he said they possess catalytic property but there are some Lewis acids which do not possess any catalytic property. That was also not explained by Lewis. So what is this relative strength of acids and bases? This concept we will take up in the next class. How to understand the relative strength of acids and bases? Yes, how to understand the relative strength of acids and bases? I hope you have followed with Arrhenius theory. You have followed with uh, bronsted lorry theory. You have followed with Lewis theory. The next concepts are going to be very important. 
relative strengths of acids and bases and the further concepts of the chapter. Please practice them for now.